All right, we are live. We are live, and uh, for one of I think the first times ever, I'm actually trying out a whole new green screeny thing. It's a it's a bit weird. I uh, need to fiddle with some settings, but we're gonna give this a try. Maybe it maybe it's better. Maybe it's worse. Who knows? We'll find out. Uh, but anyway, let's continue playing some of our lovely campaign as Hulaz Krakazul, the Amethyst Beer Dwarves. Uh, it was. Have we had an update to EU4 today? I, I was unaware of this. Let me actually check. Uh, there actually was a 21 meg update. I wonder what that was all about. Hopefully it doesn't break anything. Uh, it seems like we're able to load in the game just fine. So... With any luck, that's that's that. Oh, excuse me. Uh, yes, playing Holes Krakazul. Let's get in there. So where we left off, we just found the keys to the city. We're trying to get a claim on Kepakazol and all of that. We're not a hundred. We're not at a hundred yet. Uh, Eighty-two. Yeah, let's just let's just get ourselves to a hundred, and then we can also uh, deepen the capital again. It needs to not be building ramparts, but the ramparts are important, so we'll keep them going. So <clears throat> we can definitely afford to take reinforced speed, and one more. A if I didn't, if I didn't pay. If I didn't pay for that, we could actually take that immediately, but alas. Uh, we can make states. Ovdal Azan definitely needs to be a state. 157. It's worth. It's worth. It's definitely worth. Um, and I believe we were looking at maybe going to war with Ovdal Kanzad. Because they are stinky, basically. Uh, anything else I need to look at? Not really. We just need that to be a claim. Then we're good on preparing the land. Command adds 10 trust towards Hullas Krakazol. Huh. Okay. This one I need four provinces with Fungi at uh, level 5 dev and has a workshop. That's not difficult. Um, we have the money. We should be building everywhere because workshops are amazing. And I think we also want to turn on the development edict. And was it five that I need to get to? It just dev, just five dev, not five uh, specific production. So. Find some more serpents bloom. There's some. It's already at seven. Ale mine's already at seven. I think we're good. I don't think I need to dev anything. Yeah, we're good. We just needed the um, we needed them to all have uh, workshops, which is happening now. Loss effects of trading in mithril. That's fine because we now make. Wine. Oh, and I believe somebody has. Yes, me, Arg Ortston. Wait, no, I'm not Arg Ortston. I don't know who that is. Right, that's not even a thing. I'm. <laughs> I was like, oh, somebody's found one of these things. Is it's not that at all. It's just I, I can send a missionary if I so desire. I don't so desire though. What I do so desire is tolerance and pop control for goblinoids. Uh, we want to... Honestly, I really think purging them. Oh, expulsion no longer gives you um, a diplo rep penalty. That's interesting. I'm down for that. Yeah, let's just expel them. I mean, it's, it's way more flavorful to purge them. I think dwarves should get a, uh, a discount on perjury. Because that, that's how that's what that means. 
But we have done a strong base. Chapter 3, Section 12. To start any proper Dwarven brewing, gain large amounts of Serpent Bloom and Fungi, the base of many Dwarven ales. Now we just need a few cavernfuls of ingredients for mass production, we can get properly started. So again, a skill to trader at half price. My uh, people are more happy for me. Um, easy peasy. Ah, oh, which means ale and chill. Let's go. I, uh, before I forget, though, are you half price? Are you already a half price guy? These are both the same price. So either they're both half price... Or neither is. But considering you're level 3, you're level 2, and you're basically the same price, I think you're already half price. Alright. <clears throat> so, Ale and Chill. From their invasion of the Northern Rahen and the destruction of many ruined kingdoms, to their goblin underlings squatting in various parts of the Jade Mines, the command has always been a massive threat to us, even before we reclaimed our home. They are numerous and well-disciplined, and though we may not like to admit it, they are currently too strong for us to deal with in direct combat. That said... There might be one time-tested way to deal with them. Ale. If we offer a sizable enough tribute of a variety of alcoholic drinks to the hobgoblins in return for peace, it may just let us by for a little while at least. Yeah, alright. Though we cannot fight the command in our current state, we do have one option to ward them off. We built up a sizable cache of ale, a quality that should be far higher than what the hobgoblins are used to. If we offer them a, a large number of barrels in tribute, we might be able to win ourselves some temporary safety. Though it would slow our ale production down, the peace of mind would surely be worth it. Uh, that sucks. Or... Or... We, oh, I don't know. It does sound like coward's talk, I'm not gonna lie. It does sound like coward's talk. Yeah, nah. Fuck that. I ain't giving you shit. Uh, we can get a uh, final defensive idea. Which means I could get this, but that's not useful for me right now. Uh, let's just turn that off. Don't need that. So what do I need for amethyst in the tree? I need three states to have advancement effort. Paraj needs to view me as an enemy or a rival. Or have opinion of me at 75. That's not too difficult. Uh, but yeah, advancement effort. So institution spread. Okie dokie. Well, I'll try and get... Huh. The command didn't like that. Um... It doesn't really change anything. The only person I can go to war with that you border is Rajnahaga. And I'm trying to make them a friend. Goblin minorities yeeted out of Hula's Crackers all. Fantastic. Actually, this is just favors. We already have an alliance. I don't need that. So what I need to do... First of all, deepen the capital again. Small price to pay. And then we need to see who it is. I need to improve relations with Paraj and Castile. Or the owners of Paraj and Castile. Yes. So, improve relations with you. And where is the other one? Vast Horde of Cave Goblins. Oh no. They're already dead. Uh, that's Paraj. Where is Castriar? You. Okay. That shouldn't be an issue. Military laborers. Yeah, we'll make it dig faster. 
Hey, get a jungle with 50 tradition. And considering... Um, oh, what was it that I just got that made my guys better? Yeah, land leader shock plus one. He should be pretty good. I don't know why I fucking bother. First age Balrog event would be amazing and terrifying. Keep digging. I I feel like you're. I'm being uh, duped here. I think it's actually fine. I don't think the Balrog. Balrog doesn't exist. Balrog doesn't exist. This in this this game doesn't have Balrog. You've just joined a trade league. That's so pathetic. What happened, buddy? Oh, the, the Raj has exploded. It no longer exists. Fs in the chat. Anyway, let's get a claim on uh, Kepakakazol. Which gives us the mission. Chapter 1, Section 6. Have an able workforce and gather a yield of grain. Good thing that we are the best farmers around these parts, and most of the farming for the ancient empire was done by us. Kipakazol seems like a good place to, uh, to start as any, and the local leaders surely won't mind if experts like us farm for them for a bit. Too bad we can't skip to the first harvest, as the workers already tire of local drinks. Morale has taken a hit, as Raheni Ale tastes like cat piss, and is not strong enough to get drunk on. So there's 100 Diplo points, but Dwarven Minority Size and... Holo's Crackers all gets farmer's pay for 10 years. Nice. Which immediately lets me prepare the land. The workers' morale is rising fast. We don't know what contributes more to the rise. The fact that this land is just the right type for our needs, or that every bag full of grain brings us closer to actually good drinks. The locals are mostly just dwarves at this point, and we should probably discuss the ownership of the land before any bureaucratic mess happens. But that's a problem for tomorrow. Today we drink and feast, and when the time comes, we just figure something out. Um, yeah. Chances are the commander not going to give me this land. I can remove that now and start improving relations with you. Well, many of the traders are known for cheating countrymen and foreigners alike, lying about the quality of goods and making fraudulent promises. Krakazola merchants are well known to be trustworthy if competitive. Though they may sometimes cut deals that benefit themselves and not their trade partners, they rarely lie or take bribes. This has made us the first choice of traders around the world. Fantastic. Uh, oh my god. God, three and a half grand, or three, basically all of my money. Spinal is an oxide mineral and is often found in octahedral crystals. It's typically found in three geological situations, as crystals in limestones and dolomites that have been subjected to contact metamorphism. Sure. Uh, as irregular shaped grains in basic igneous rocks and as water worn pebbles in alluvial deposits. It seems we found a huge deposit of it on the way in the way of our digging operations. I mean, I have to pay the money. I can't I can't take decreased dig speed till the end of the game. That would suck. Fucking F for all of my money. I was so loaded. That's that's a big bummer. Granite blockade is done. So let's move on to the Cavern of Solitude. Orcs are yeeted as well. Continual advancement of whole construction in Hulla's Crack is all. Several prominent members of our more artistic community, artists, stone carvers, and various others, have brought for a uh, proposal to the forefront. As a demonstration of our culture, they say, our whole tomb must in and of itself be a work of art. To implement this, we surely take a large amount of time and resources away from other projects. Perhaps, uh, like all art, true beauty is worth the price. I am in agreement. 
a beautiful hold. Actually, do we need that? We're, th we're three step anyway. Yeah, we don't need that. That event scales based on the treasury. You had it before while broke and it was barely anything. I, I wish it was still barely anything. Tilkahar, we didn't manage to get all the way. If we bring you back and then proclaim a guarantee, that gets you to 75, but we need to keep you at 75 until we get you to 75. Can't offer you military access. We'll proclaim a guarantee on you as well. Gets you to 72. You're now at... Seven, everyone's at 75. Now I just need three... Advancement efforts. Bit weird, but okay. Not all of our kin uh, stayed in Rajnahaga after we abandoned Hullo's Krakazol. Some travelled further abroad and dispersed throughout Rohan. These amethysts have found livelihoods far away, but now we can offer them a new home. Some of them might feel compelled to work with us to restore our hold, while others will be content with our situation. Either way, our doors are open to all of our kin that wish to return here. Facts. Let's go. Gain taxes in uh, ale mine and all other places. And settler increase. And another key happens in a year. Interesting. Where's the bloody door? If we wish to restore Stramolgiv... The fuck is Stramolgiv? We must find the door leading to his grand hall. Search the caverns, it must be somewhere. Stramolgiv. I have no idea. Anyway, I don't need to be guaranteeing either of you now. I think maybe... Offer knowledge sharing to one Zia. That's seven ducats. Or what about Guamud? Five ducats. Rajnahaga is two ducats. Burjartensius. Eleven ducats. Yes, queen. Slay queen. D except don't, don't, don't slay the dwarf. Mm. I'm conflicted now. I'm like I'm fully yes queen about Celadora, but she's kind of kicking the shit out of the dwarves, which I'm not a hundred percent cool with. She's going after thieves' grave. Why do you want to enter the mountains? Eh, 11 ducats is 11 ducats. And Anzabad is wrecking Elisna. Well, we'll see what happens. Stramolgiv, could that be the name of the special beer or slash brewery? Maybe. Did you miss anything? Um, we've just done basically uh, a few missions. We've completed this whole mission area. We're just waiting on more missions to pop up. But other than that, nothing really happened. Your beloved queen is making sure the only you're the only pink dwarven nation on the map. You know, honestly, this this is oh that's Bersartentius as well. The fuck. I'm not, honestly, I've never seen the AI Brassar Shanches do that well. Or Virkal Gulen. Like, let's be honest. Jadari exploded and fucking... Look at that. That's the strangest... Fucking Nolika. Oh my god. What is this world? I, I kinda, I'm kind of, i kind of digging it. As a dwarf, digging it. You, you get the point, right? Yeah, I'm not... Yeah, okay. Cool, cool. You've embraced colonialism. Does that mean my knowledge sharing is no longer needed? Oh no, you're getting global trade from me. Wait, you just embraced colonialism? Oh, 
I, I have I have the printing press, so I'm giving you printing press now. You're you're welcome. Oh, Kurunuleg seems scary as well. Restoration of Ovdal Azan. Let's go. What do you want to build? Barracks is not bad. Does that work now? Okay, now it works. I there's a li there's literally a button on my microphone, and all I did was press the button. Then I pressed the button again when I was done, and apparently that wasn't good enough. I had to unplug and replug it in. This microphone's getting a little bit old, I think. Um, anyway, uh, basically all I was saying there is that I don't give a flying fuck about human bodies. Okay, so we've got another key and Stramel give. Let's do another key first. With each passing month, more and more dwarves arrive at the gates, eager to put their hands to use. Quickly, our population grows and prosperity is at hand. Among the recent arrivals is an old haggard dwarf by the name of Otgad. He approaches our ruler with a simple yet cryptic message. Have you found Stramel give yet? The question is met with some confusion as to what he was talking about. He takes a deep breath and explains. Strangot Molgiv, the great ale giver, he explains, was once the pride of Hullis Krakazol, a legendary brewery that in ages past supplied all of Old Warov with the finest ales and brews dwarven kind has ever known. He pauses and looks around into the intrigued faces of the dwarves listening. I'm a descendant of the great brewmaster Edig. It's right here. <laughs> um... Uh, yeah, Eric, and with me I have his legacy, the key to Stromolgiv. He reaches into the uh, ragged coat, takes out an uh, intricate key, a key which begs for its lock to be opened. So we'll start looking for um, the, the key. I mean, yeah. I... Okay, this this mission here, where's the bloody door, needs to be locked until that event happens. I'm not going to lie, that, that would make way more sense. So, Stromolgiv. At last we found the entrance to the brewery. Just as the old tales that we have since discovered promised us, the brewery was valiantly defended by Erig Granitbru and his brave companions. Piles of skeletons surround the door, a solemn sight to behold. At last, Otgad walks towards the door. He places the key into the lock and looks around at the crowd that has come to see the legend realised. This is a great occasion. From father to son, this key has been waiting to return to this very place. It's my honour to recover the legacy of my ancestor. He falls silent and turns the key. The locking mechanism stirs to life, gears and chains rattling through the stone as the door swings open into the Great Hall. So I get an expedition target. And then new missions unlocked after the expedition succeeds. Sick. Let's do it. Prepare an expedition for Eric's End. So it's a uh, medium danger, short length. So let's... This seven's good. Send them. And we'll give them supplies. I don't really have any money anymore.
And I'll purchase some love for a little bit more morale. And I think that's going to be fine. Maybe a little bit of organization as well. All right. Start the expedition. Look out, cried one of the scouts. Above us, he pointed up at the ceiling, where a huge group of large bats hung from the rocky surface, their eyes blinking in the unsteady light of the torches. Roused like that, they descended upon the group, biting and tearing upon the flesh of the soldiers. Wild flailing without any form of coordination ensued, and panic spread among the expedition. Well, that's unfortunate. Despite the desperate and panicked cries of the soldiers, many other things managed to keep, at last keep somewhat calm and focused. All the, uh, sorry, enough that they managed to organize a coordinated defense, slowly driving the bats away into the caverns and crevices from whence they came. Slowly but surely, even the most annoying and resisting bats were beaten and removed from the soldiers they had latched onto. So, yeah, it's not too bad. It could have been worse. Hardware can be like that. I feel you with the mics out. Yeah, audio is like the most difficult part of this job, not gonna lie. News for an orc war band. Oh boy. Oh boy. Alright, well. Prepared to meet it. Come on, where is it? been made acutely aware of the fact that we're not the only ones roaming the caverns by the scouts' newest discovery. Just ahead of us li uh, lies what seems to be an orcish supply camp, where they sort of food and rations for later use. Stored in typical orcish fashion, it's a big pile of random things. Let's look for anything of value. During the search of the pile, our men managed to find some loot, old dwarven jewellery and other valuable trinkets, as well as gems and gold. The scouts returned to the camp, proudly displaying their newfound riches, only for it to be confiscated and added to our own pile. Hell yeah. Dwarves of War has been one of the coolest things about Anbanar ever since they added them, uh, but with this they've gotten even better. I'm I'm in a big agreement here. I really like it. Our lands have once again been attacked by a vast orc warband. The coming battle will be harsh, but we can, nay, we must pull through. These orcs would see us slaughtered, but it is not us who shall be dying this day. Fucking agree. Why did we... Why are they over there? Some thought our decision to favour quantity over quality was foolish. That it would lead to a decline in leadership or even make our army a bit of a joke. But they were wrong. Our newer, larger army has unlocked the talents of our military minds, leading to even better levels of organization. Again, professionalism and a half price military man. I like that. You are the half price military man. Durin Forge Bar. Legendary name, if I do say so myself. Uh, yes, you can fight my people. There you go. Wait, how are they here again? See you later, dorks. Lovely. Yeah, the warbands do hit hard. That's true. So let's say, look at Eric's end. Stromolgiv. Level 1, we got dev cost, which is useful because of the cavern. Although, minus 80%, we're only getting a 40% here. Uh, at level 2, we got a bit more, and it then produces wine instead. Actually, wine when going to level 1. Um, then here, dev cost minus 120%. I mean, it's it's fine. It's monthly splendor and trade value. It's it's okay. It's not it's not amazing. I think it is my only wonder though. Yeah, it is. Until I get here.
Cool. 21 Black Orcs rise up and roll in Hull as Crackers All. Excuse me? Stand your ground while uh, the army arrives. I mean, I'm getting a plus one. And they're getting a minus two from the terrain, so. It's not exactly a difficult fight. Hey, the Cavern of Solitude is done. So I can then colonize both of these. Expedition returns! Fantastic news. Uh, I'm going to send you back out into the field... Undergrowth goblin people plead for aid. I'm just not even going to read that because it's irrelevant. Alright. Get everyone into place. Core that. And we have new missions. Very nice. Stromogiv is no joke. If this thing wasn't embedded into the side of a mountain, our ancestors would have definitely taken it with them. They might have even tried to carve it out of the walls ourselves, if it was up to us. This bad boy can handle so much in it, and it still produces results. Denier's boots got in there after a late night accident with his friends, but came out with something so disgusting we couldn't even call it ale. So we call it boot beer instead, and it sure wasn't good compared to anything else, but it gave us a good laugh and enough to drink for a couple of hours. We, have to, we need to try more stuff out before we continue deeper. So we could just make beer out of literally anything. Unlimited power. Yeah, sure. Now the thing with the abhorrent ale called boot beer, we had apparently left the sourness level on the on position when we should have instead turned the sweetness knob two times to the left and half pressed the cloudiness button while simultaneously pumping the carbon valve back and forth or something like that. The now bootless Damien managed to find a manual, which was sadly too stained and touched by time to be any actual use. The one page that was readable was encased in a thin layer of some glass-like material to preserve it. The page contained the recipe and knobs and switches to a generally good ale, and further mention of more fine-tuning options in the piping strum oil give of running even deeper into the mountain caverns. We've now decorated the wall of the control room with a preserved page of the manual and used the rest of the book of a, as a footrest. Uh, now we know that the brewery of the ancestors runs deep and there's still so much to explore. But first, let's try to brew some drinks to make our journey bearable. Cheers to Stromolgiv. And there is another expedition target. King Thor is not currently tipsy, drunk, or hammered. Fucking hell. Didn't know that was a thing. We've done many experiments and we have tasted many ales, but now it's time for the ultimate test. Dwarvar Dark has always been the all-time favourite of the dwarves, but now, here we might have a chance to perfect it. What's the worst thing that could happen? We could black out, apparently. Also, I think I'm going to take that. I could take the admin tech and then start doing a mill idea, but I don't want to do a mill idea. Ah, uh, do I do that? How long do I have to wait? 344 days. I think I can wait until the next year. Okay. So let's go to Eric's End once again. I also need some men. It is a platinum danger. So I'm thinking if we get like ten fellas go to Eric's end. Uh, meanwhile, what we want is to raise morale with that. Prepare supplies. Honestly, with admin points, seems like a better idea at the moment. Um, party share. It's probably fine. Uh, organize the troops. We'll map the terrain. 
Yeah, good enough. Now we just need the manpower. Been meaning to play the North Dwarves so that they would get them outside of the mountain to the range of the giants. I don't know about that. I don't know if I'd really want to take dwarves outside of the mountains. It's not really my jam. Dwarves staying in the mountains is most fun for me. Anyway, I think this is going to work out just fine, so we'll start the expedition. Done many experiments we've tasted... Oh yeah, we've already read that one. So, blacking out. In a drunken dream, we walked alone. Narrow roads of cobblestone. Near the flame of a lantern, we turned our beads to the cold and damp. Then our eyes were stabbed by the flash of Eon's light that split the night. And the touch and touch the taste of Gripolder. We all knew that Draravar Dark was a nostalgic drink, but this, this is different. This wasn't as nostalgic as it was somber. So I get Draravar Dark until the end of the game, giving a bunch of bonuses. I get Tipsy uh, for a year, and we get Draravar Dark giving idea cost, uh, production efficiency, and all that. That's cool. So here, you don't have the modifier Farmer's Pay. Wait, Farmer's Pay is in here, isn't it? Nope. That lasts until 70. Then in 70, I guess I can purchase the land. Over here, I need to make my ruler a general and have 40,000 men. Excuse me. Okay. Rather not have to do that, but whatever. Do I have a new... Uh, oh, he's balls. He's really bad. So I think... I can... Yeah, I got 10 days after... January that I can do it. So, yeah, 10 days left. I can take this 40% more expensive, but uh, if I do it, I get 6 innovativeness, which is always nice. Works for me. Just gives me new guys. Clockwork Rifleman. Actually, what was it? Cave Cavern, Cavern Trot Outriders. Let's go. May terrors stalk the caverns of the serpent spine, but none are so apathetic to their own dangerousness as the wandering husks laden with poison. We'll try and avoid these ones. Although... Approach and handle with care and extract a poison I can. Sure, let's try that. We gain orc and, and morale. And hopefully nothing bad happens. The voice has returned. Yes, although it was fine, it was just as good and fine and stuff um, at the start of my last stream. And, and then it deteriorated over the, the course of the stream. So, I'm thinking we might have something similar going on. Also, Bursar Tanch has just attacked Tlucht. For Yurker? How are you getting Yurker? Is Zanbar a vassal? It is, okay. Look, don't blame me. I will never not feel some kind of kinship with Bursar Tanches and the Phoenix Empire. It's, it's still my favorite campaign that I've played. You'll never see them. The Cav Dwarves are usually formed and colonized the area. I definitely won't be using Cav either. You want the Science Dwarves to get a proper mission tree. They're their northern hold inside the Serpent's by north of the Cav Dwarf. South of the northernmost dwarves. 
Is that this one? Oslem Azeldir? Or are we talking Dur Vazatun? We know who your favorite waifu is. We've seen the short videos. Look, I mean... Can you blame me, though? She's so fucking perfect. Uh, do, what do I spend admin points on? I, I have nothing to spend admin points on. There. Should we probably deepen that hold now, can't we? Don't know. Uh, but what I will do is upgrade that fortress. And Ale Mine needs upgrading, and you need deleting. So close. Goblinoids are known common sight in Servant Spine with all the goblins and hobgoblins and such. Well, there's some rarer sights than, uh, that are rather unexpected, such as the bugbears. I've read this one before. We're going to make a show of force. Hopefully that'll work. Falling back for a moment to regret, we prepared a powerful show of strength. Increasing the combat width and all that, and they fuck off. We win. Get out of here. Lovely. Uh, what do I want to purchase here? Institution of Spread and Truth Faith Provinces, I think, might be a good idea. Is that all of them? Alright, I've got one province that is the wrong culture. Oh, sorry, two. That's not bad. Goblin Summoner. This is the third time I've had Iglithob the Unfathomable show up. We're just going to try and kill him again. Uh, without much consideration, we moved into range, but that turned out to be a grave error. With the swing of his wand, the whole cave was suddenly filled with elementals and ambushed us from all sides, seemingly shifted out of the very walls around us. We were quickly outnumbered, or at least overpowered by his ruthless display of the arcane. Well, that's unfortunate. Money for a little bit of prestige, hell yeah. Is it? If I've read the events like a bunch of times, I'm not going to reread them. They're really good, but they certainly lose their luster after a time. Virkal Gulen likes us. A little bit. The animosity between the peoples of the Serpent Spine is ancient and storied, tale written in blood and iron, scrawled in the stony halls of the Dwarvar. The generations of conflict between dwarves, goblins, and orcs have created a broad and general distrust, an assumption that the other decides nothing more than kill and take what little uh, each people have. Whispered tales of atrocities and glorious revenge are told in hushed voices to children at night to make them fear the boogeyman and raise them to rejoice in their ancient enemy's destruction. So the distrust between peoples is reinforced and compounded, each side believing the worst of their foes, I mean, orcs and goblins are the worst. There's no... I, I, don't, I don't see what, what the issue is here. It's, it's not really boogeymen. It's, they are evil. In the province of Hullos Krakazol, the atmosphere of xenophobia and paranoia is boiled over into an open conflict between the peoples that live there. It's uncertain how the conflicts died. Got the greenskins existed, and therefore we killed them. That's That's not a conflict. That's just the natural order and, and resolution of an issue, and that issue is greenskins. Yeah. Um, it's uncertain how the conflict started, but it quickly escalated into mob violence, with armed gangs patrolling the streets, breaking into homes, looting shops, and killing many, any members of the other races they laid their hands on. Great. I don't see the problem here. 
After a gory night of fire and blood, the grip of murderous insanity began to release the mob, and the survivors could begin to take stock of the aftermath. Houses burned, livelihoods destroyed, countless dead, and even more displaced. The minority populations are particularly devastated. It will take years for them to recover if they ever do. I mean, it's it's basically it, you, you're you're giving me a crystal knack basically uh, event, and and except the problem is the orcs deserve it. It's the difference here. I'm I'm not sure why you're trying to make me feel bad about goblins getting fucked over. Strange tidings have arrived from a far corner of our dominion. A far a famed inventor, known for his keen intellect, background in mining, and love of fine wine and cheese, has turned his sights to a new field. He seems to be sowing strange miniaturized flags, seeking to render our great banner in ever smaller replicas. Normally, we'd cont be content to leave such strange minds to their wandering. However, strange rumors have arisen around his endeavors, and that they are not simply an eccentric project, but are in fact a quest towards some mysterious ascension. Some argue we should allow this brilliant man is due, uh, and trust that there is a method uh, to what seems like madness towards lesser minds. Others point to the day of the ashen skies as a grim reminder of what can happen when logic is followed too far. Uh, I'm going to shut down his fucking laboratory, because I've seen the end of that event, and it ain't good. No sharing ends, okay. Well, we'll see if anyone else wants a little bit of money, or to give me money. Come here, the grudge bear is... No money. Hinfat is one ducat. Rajnahaga is two ducats. About dwarves and mountains, in my D&D &D campaign, the ancient Roman Empire substitute was dwarven. Build the old roads, grand structures, and famed legions clad in steel head to toe. That's cool. I like that idea. Let the dwarves become gods. But he called him a man. So I'm, I'm fine with dwarves ascending. I ain't fine with uh, whatever the shit that was. Ah, oh, yes, queen. Slay queen. Transplant cows of uh, gas sometimes get wedged in the corners. We'll try and find a different path. Due to the labyrinth nature of the serpent sign, it wasn't hard to find another way around that particular part of the caves, leading us swiftly around the gas into fresh air. Nice. I believe we are now fully colonized. I'm going to start, like, growth in Eric's end. It's probably better for the colonists to do here rather than me clicking buttons. Because they're really... They're, these are most effective at low dev ranges. And I am not clicking that button for 75 when, like, this is 44, you know? Well, explain the caverns and crevices of the serpent's mind, it's not uncommon for the groups to disperse from time to time, leaving stragglers behind. At the end of the day, they usually join up with the main group, and that's that. Usually. While counting our numbers at the day's end, the quartermaster quickly picked up on a few missing expeditionaries. Get out there and find them, the captain commands. But well, before we could depart, they soon arrived at camp, in a dead sprint, running away from soft sailing shadows above them. Cloakers! One shouts before being picked up by one of these nightmarish creatures. As soon as our archers and gunners took aim and started bombarding the cloakers with arrows and led the monsters quickly dispersed. They're known for picking up stragglers and people left behind on battlefields, a seasoned adventurer recalls. Not for direct attacks. We must have scared them away. Fantastic. Uh, the capital is currently level deep. Seven. But it's currently being dug. Hashtag always be going deeper. My trader is dead. Scrub you, I think you were also half price. Yeah, you were.
the policy of supporting and expanding the bureaucracy of our nation is paying off. I really don't need. Uh, fuck it. You know, just take the take the tech now. Change construction by not by not five. Yes. So I need to take an idea. I would like to take something like innovative. Religious is really good as well. Morale of armies. Um, eventually, maybe it'll get some like discipline or something. Administrative's not a terrible idea either. Tolerance can eat shit. Um, religious for days full might be good. Leave it for now. Read the flavor text of the Hold tooltip. So Hold's beginning to become impregnable to outsiders. Infrastructure and architecture stretches in all directions in a maze-like fashion. Mm -mm. Innovative this late? Disagree. Early or never. You take religious extra morale and you're already stacking that. That's a good point. Also, my innovativeness is... It's already really good. I was thinking innovativeness mostly for free policies is always nice. Um, diplomatic ideas get advisor costs. Quality ideas, that's what I was looking at. Infantry combat ability, 15%. Very nice indeed. Uh, but religious is also really good. Although I don't need the missionaries. We just expel bitches. Upgrade that. Goblin ambush. Ugh. Oh shit, they're all the way over there. Get out of the capital, you fuck ass. It's giving me devastation. But yeah, these are done, so I don't need to worry about that anymore. Ooh, another blessing. Let's go. So somebody did end up getting something. Earth Seed is now also owned by somebody of our culture. That's Dirt Hole Rock, not Earth Seed. Must be one of these. Either way, we're gonna grab, I think, Dev Cost. stuff. Um, he's about to hit the level 8. Not much more to go. Doesn't know what the max level is on top of the head. I think it's, uh, for most places, it's 10. But I think um, this one goes deeper. I love the portraits. They're so fucking nice. 
I'm, I'm a big fan. Land purchase. With Kepikazol well under our economic control, it might be time to also put it under our political sphere of influence. We may buy it directly so it may unify our holdings into one great nation. So, I don't know. Let's see if they'll say yes. He said fucking yes. Let's go. Nice if I got an event for it. It also starts coring it for me, too. Dope. I'll kill you later. So, for cotton candy, I need Kepazgazole to be on 6 production, workshop, town hall. Balls of Steel, Ovdal Azan needs to have production 15, a workshop, and a manufactory. Nobility influence, 40 or greater, and three generals, or nobility and officer corps. What does that nobility and officer corps do? Fine. For 20 years I'm not taking 10% morale of armies penalty. Fuck that. Let's see, it's north of Dirt Hole Rock. It must be that one. Um, that would be an interesting enemy to see in a D&D &D game. What? Uh, the Balrog? Or the, the Cloakers? Or what? My lord, one of your advisors is suggesting selling off noble titles. No. Or actually, yes. You're disloyal, but you'll be loyal soon enough. That's unfortunate. Mages and hobgoblins debate. No. Look, I don't give a flying fuck. I don't, I'm not going to read this because I don't want to know what the game thinks I should be doing with hobgoblins. Fuck hobgoblins, basically. One of the best tinkerers in Hollis Krakazol has brought us marvellous news. Through hard work, gumption, and a spark of genius, she's managed to restore an ancient dwarven machine to full functioning. Thank you for the innovativeness, then. Expedition returns. That's beautiful. And I gain innovativeness from that, too. And apparently a whole lot of military points. That's better. Can I have like a... Yeah, I'll take those two, fuck it. Why couldn't I have fire and shock at the same time? Is that is that not good enough for you, game, huh? Um, any way. Cloakers that they are in the lore would be so OP. Um, in D and D, they they're not called cloakers, but what are they called? Um, ah, oh, fuck. They they fought them pretty early on in Critical Role Campaign Two. They were going down like a a watery path just after they met the gentleman and they fought. Did they call them cloakers? I don't think they did. What were they fucking called? Those culture events are all. They all just assume the greenskins would be allowed in your society and make these issues. Yeah. Surprised you got rid of Siege Generals, to be honest. Yeah, but I was looking for, like, like... I just want to kick the shit out of them, and Six Shock is pretty good. Um, I can't remember what the fucking things are called. Hang on. Um, d d Cloakers... Is that what Aboleths, I think. No. Flying cloaker creature 5e. <laughs> what is it called? Is it literally just called a cloaker? I think it might actually be. 
It is just called a cloaker. Okay. And it's a uh, Chandrain 8. I could have sworn there was something... They, they called it something different in Critical Role, at least. I think the Dwarves are better at fire. They are in the late game. We're not in the late game yet, though. Black Orcs and Hull's Crackers all. Let's wreck the shit out of them. If infantry combat ability can't go amiss. Learnings of an Elder. Let's get that mill back. At some point I have to attack you. A Knight of Blood and Fire again. I just don't care. I don't care. I don't want these culture events. Like, I have them set to um, purge. Also, Verkul Ghulin is popping off. Like, they're in Rahen. Let's start with something simple. We've gathered some not important looking screws and bolts we saw lying around and tossed them into the great mouth of Stromalgiv. Dwarves are strong, Stromalgiv is strong, and iron is strong. It takes courage to drink what will come out, but we are ready and our curiosity is as thirsty as our mouths. Now we wait for the results. After a long while of waiting and anticipation, a liquid like mercury came out of the pipes of Stromalgiv to fill a barrel beneath the piping. Its consistency was fast flowing, but as thick as syrup, and its calm surface indistinguishable from a mirror. Having a pint full feels like lifting a hammer from the table with each sip. Drinking it doubles the weight of the drinker. Many dwarves almost died of asphyxiation while wrestling. We have yet to decide if this is an honourable way to die or not. This extra weight, however, is good for exercise and steadying yourself in combat. No beast topples a dwarf with burzen in their belly. That's cool. That's really cool. Five years to get morale of armies and damage received. Yeah, that's real nice. That's cool. Capacazole needs to finish coring. Can I use the dwarf dwarf nations near you plus your Raj ally to challenge the command? Uh, probably. I can ally Gulen. Probably can't ally Kanzad. They don't like me. And they're rivals with Gulen anyway. I think I should go and take this land. Like, how many men do you have? 32,000? Fuck it, let's go. That, oh. Damn it. I thought that's where they were. Gold. So we're here for a moment. This dwarf on dwarf violence is very disgusting. Hateful, really. It's treason against Hollow's Crackers all. No. Okay, we're just going to siege now.
<laughs> Bursar Tench is going on a fucking tear. Let's go. They're 100% going to form Phoenix. Right? They have to. I'm not going to take this because I'm going to core a bunch of stuff. Hey, Eric Zen's manpower has gone up. I am going to do a little bit of development. Not much, but just a little bit. Hopefully I can finish this off before you finish that one off. They've got more cannons than I do. How long is it going to take for them to admit defeat? How much manpower you got left? 25k. Regina Hager doesn't like us anymore, that's unfortunate. Damn it, you're going here. Finally. Alright, so let's go and kill these guys. Lovely, easy peasy. I can take another one of these reforms. Uh, admin policy, leader cost, advisor cost. I'm going to take meritocratic recruitment for some advisor cost. Always a nice one to stack. All right, they're also unconditionally surrendering to me, so. I want that. Don't want to pill. Do I want to pillage? Nah. This is war reps. Seventy-seven aggressive expansion, but no one really cares. I feel like that's a good. That's a good one. That's good. Yeah, that, that, I think that was a good idea. Alright, so let's get home again. We can upgrade our government rank to a duchy. Very nice. I think that gives us an extra diplomat, I think. Maybe in the next month? Yes, it does. 
and we are capped on mill points again. Um, are those colonies, actually? Earthseed is a colony, so let's take you away from... I've only got two colonists now. So take you away from Rock Shelter. And then pop you in Earthseed. And unfortunately, I don't have the ability to get any maps. Let's see, does anyone have any maps of this area? No. <laughs> okay. Treasure trove. Give me some mill points. Cool. And we can rival Rajnahaga. I don't really want to rival Rajnahaga. I want to be friends with him, right? Your opinion needs to be at 75 again. I need a statesman at level 2 and 90 legitimacy. I'll wait until legitimacy gets up there. Over here, I just need to make my ruler a general. I really don't want to, but I kind of have to. Good lord, he's fucking amazing! To be an amethyst dwarf is to be a warrior. No matter one's lot in life, everyone is expected to be able to wield an axe or a sword and be glad to be do so. The earth just slays in our blood, and there is no greater glory than to fall in battle to a worthy foe. Of course, there is no exception made for the monarch. The history of our hold is littered with great warrior kings and queens. In order to rule Hulda's crackers all, you must slay. Damn right. Inspiring leader is a fucking amazing trait. I guess we're losing reformist. I hope we re uh, replace indulgent, though. That would be... That would be sick. What are we replacing? We're not. Oh, fuck off. Oh, shit. We can get another blessing, which is going to be... A uh, settler increase so we can colonize the rest of this. Maybe. Construction cost is usually good as well. We can actually send it there as well. So Eric's end. The dwarves at B, B just have map. Yeah, but I can't. I can't steal their maps yet because stealing maps is something that you get. Where do I even see that? It's it's not available at this tech level, right? Oh, maybe it is. Okay. Guess we'll try then. Let's plan to work on you as well. Oh, did we get eclipsed? I feel like we got eclipsed. Rajnahaga separatists. That's rude. Why did I click that button? It was revoke embargo that I wanted. Knowledge sharing we can give to Gulen. That works.
Honestly, we're going to go anti-monstrous on you as well. So that I get Grozum Deer before um, Ghoulin does. Oh, you've got an uh, expedition target as well. Uh, you can wait, I think. King's old age. Nice. How old is he at the moment? 160. Gonna have all this on encourage development so I don't like forget shit. Because I do. I, I'm very forgetful. I need to finish colonizing that so I can get Dirt Hill Rock. So any more actually? Do any of these have uh, things? To yeah, we've got another expedition target there. Nice. And for you, obviously, you're getting full annexed. And all of your money is now my money. Oh, and Gulen broke their alliance with me? Because they want Grozum Deer? Fucking assholes. Is it not enough that is it in that it's in dwarf hands? Is that not enough for you? I have a bigger army than you anyway. Counting house in Capacazal. Yeah, we're working on that. So over here I need 80% manpower and 30 in the combat. Oh, are we going to war here? Look at this way, lots of gold and mountain provinces westward. If they want to fight, let's fight. True. Yeah, basically, how do you already at full fucking relations? And you just went... You were probably at like 90 when you just decided to break the alliance with me. It's kind of filth. We can get Miltech. Pasarega, let's make you my friend. That's a grudgeon indeed. Right, 
next expedition, platinum level. So, where is this again? Damas Glaft. Right there. Well, I don't think I'm going to get there in time. Maybe? Hell yeah. I wasn't worried. You were worried. So, let's send 10,000 men. Uh, raise morale. I got money again, so we'll do that. Uh, organize map terrain twice. Uh, supplies. I'll just buy supplies. And uh, pie share by 100 crowns. And that's good to go. Yeah, it's quite a big payday if we uh, if we fix this one good. Let's <clears throat> uh, see, just self sustain. Oh, I didn't even see what that was. My bad. Uh, we're gonna grab Dirt Hill Rock immediately because, like I said, they I don't I don't want to lose this to Vukogulan. I don't want them to colonize in here before I can. We can wait until next year when this is 40% off. So who went Tech 15 then? A gelatinous cube will attempt to retrieve the loot. We kind of fail. Hey, let's go, Phoenix! Things you love to see. Yeah, fuck it. Uh, Vocal Goon's now my enemy. What about Harrow's Ordalum? You're at level 12, 13, 11, 14. I have no idea who went Tech 15. I mean, I can I can check, I guess. There's a bunch. Portnam, Exos, Asmari Temple, Crothan, Gibbard, Indelber. I don't know why this is affecting me, though. I don't feel like this should be affecting me. Colonize West, Freehold, that's true. What's this one called again? Gore Zumbrog. Great mushrooms. Uh, we'll, we'll, we need the food. We need the food. And it's great. 7% supplies, because these, these edible mushrooms are just fucking trippy. Prospering times in Peridot Keep. Mushrooms. They give manpower modifier, so we'll get manpower. That's so much money, it's great.
As soon as anyone else wants sharing knowledge. 233. I think it probably sorts it by how willing they are to accept, right? Probably. Alright, one more month and we'll take that Miltech. And I guess we will also... Oh, we need to start getting Spy Network on the command, actually. So we'll grab that, five more innovativeness, and yeah, it costs a lot, but my troops are now fucking sick. Fire and tortoise, boys, let's go. Uh, mm -mm. See, so yeah, I need my manpower to go back up to 80%, so that's going to be fine. Bugbears attack. Kill them all. Yeah, everyone's in a coalition against the command. I wish I could join that. Go deeper. Copper is good. Also, if you've finished, you are going to get yourself a fat fortress. It's almost time for a full back row of Arty. Yeah. Stick to their together, stay strong, kick the shit out of them. That's the, that's the way, that's the plan. Oh, yo, we could get some fucking boats. Let's go. What is combat width right now? It's 29. Uh, we currently have 32 infantry. How many? We have 8 cannons. I'm going to wait until I get the 90% uh, manpower first. Just for the mission. Gelatinous cube again. Get a bit of loot out of it, at least. Colony stuff from Diptech. That's a good idea. good point. Plus 15 settler increase. Uh, fuck, we'll take it now. Orcs roam in the depths. Grozend had just completed. That was you, right? Yes. can also be full cord. I need to repair. Right? Is this not destroyed? Oh, I think it's because it's building. So as soon as you finish building, I think I should be able... Oh, did you just... No, you didn't. 
soon as you're finished building, I think I can hold restoration. It's not that expensive. In the, in the grand scheme of things, it's not expensive. All of these are terrible for me, though. Useless. I guess I get the Merc one. Looking forward to the 6th, I believe, of December when Dwarf Fortress gets uh, gooey. Oh, yeah. For sure, I'll be playing that. I don't know if I'll be any good or if it's going to be interesting to watch on stream. Uh, but I'm going to try. I think I need to do it on stream so I can get people to help me. Uh, off you fuck too. <laughs> yeah, cheaper boats, definitely the one I need. The whole rock has been done. Get a fucking fort going there. Might as well do green pit now. Soldiers return to camp from our most recent foraging trip, bringing with them a strange breed of mushrooms, one that's never been seen before or by anyone in the camp. Kept has a strange oily shimmer to it, reflecting the light of our lanterns and torches in strange patterns like a puddle of oil. For that reason, our head biologist has dubbed them oil caps. They exude an alluring smell, which raises the cook's interest as to what they can consume safely or not. I mean, let's find out. The mushrooms don't taste that good, but their effect is undeniable. Our men feel elated, ecstatic even. The mushrooms have contained a sort of psychoactive drug, at least from the looks of it. It's led to a far more enjoyable journey, but some of the soldiers are so busy spending time in their own world daydreaming that they struggle uh, behind don't pay much attention to what's actually going on with the expedition. It's fine. It's fine. Need a new guy here. Morale of armies. I know you're expensive. Well, you're not actually that much. You're really not expensive at all. Like, we do make quite a bit of money. Let's get full fat level fives. The command just found my fucking guy. Also, I don't feel like I need to steal maps. As soon as this is colonized, we get vision here. Did you miss more mushroom puns? You you just missed us eating uh, psychedelics. More cloakers. Peridot Keep is now Amethyst Dwarf. Very nice. <laughs> Fucking hell. They caught me at 50. More oil caps and now we overdose on them. Soldiers eating the mushrooms seem to have a great time, eating more and more in their increasingly ecstatic state. This invites others to join them in their revelry, but just as a new group of mushroom-hungry men arrive, the first ones who have eaten copious amounts of mushrooms by now start coughing and their mouths begin to foam. They fall over with dull eyes as if they'd gone blind. The state of unconsciousness soon ends with death, the entire body slumped after an episode of intense twitching. Those that witnessed this threw the mushrooms away in disgust, but for some it was already too late. Those that survived the twitches and tremors are in an unstable state of mind needing constant attention. Balls. But we gain a morale. So it's okay. Uh... Land force him at half price. I I don't I don't need him. I like the uh, morale man, even though he's more expensive. Right, so we've just finished this, so you should be visible. Balls. I thought that would make it visible.
yeah, 300 dwarves ate the mushrooms. Very sad. Bugbears attack. Kill them! Which mod is that? This is Anbanar. I believe there is a link in the description. If not, I will quickly go and grab a link to put in the description. It is a... For those of you who are new here, or just arrived, or just are unaware of what Anbanar is, it is a full conversion mod that changes the world into a fantasy world uh, based heavily on D&D, &D, Dungeons and Dragons. Um, it's a world of the creator's own creation. It's not like a based on a book or anything of the sort. And it's really fucking cool. It is my favorite mod on... Uh, it's my favorite mod in, in EU4. And there's the link to it. Let me just edit the description to see if it's there or not. There it is. Done. Apologies for it not being there. Well, I guess I could colonize Tight Passage. Love that name. Not gonna lie. It's solid S tier name. So honestly, some of the the names in um, in the Serpent Spine are legitimately just filth. Like, for example, is it this one? No. Someone along this. Massive shaft! Let's go! <laughs> Old Hall is right next to my massive shaft. It's, uh, yeah. I, I, I do, I do enjoy... The naming convention of the caverns. Some of them are pretty good. So wool, I'm thinking, should probably be a soldier's household. Gold's obviously a soldier's household. Uh, local dev cost? Uh, I don't think... Hmm, I don't know, maybe that should be a household too. I know Serpent's Bloom should definitely be a household though. Wait a minute. You don't even have a farm estate. You should probably have that. Just south of Massive Shaft. What's just south of Massive Shaft? Big Nick. Endless Chasm. I mean, just, they're just, they're really good. They're really good. Big fan of the names. S tier naming convention. All right, we're back up to 53 with you. They don't have anything. They have no idea. All right, well, I guess I'll just uh, claim on your cabins then. Grozum Deer is complete. So we listen to the command. The command is, without doubt, the greatest threat to our hold. As such, although this approach is generally frowned upon among Amethyst Dwarves, it would be wise to ensure that we know all their goings on as soon as possible. It's not feasible for a Dwarf to infiltrate their ranks through impersonation or plain sight espionage, so this is a task for only the very stealthiest among us. These spies must figure out their battle plans, their supply routes, their weak points, and anything else that might give an edge over these hobgoblins. Honestly, Anbanar would be a fantastic D and D setting, rivaling Faerun or any other. Yeah, I agree with that. I would love, I would love to play a 
D&D campaign in Andenar. I would love to do that. So Kepikazol, why are you not? I need money. Courthouse workshop six dev, and not building something. So once that's finished, we can do that, and then there is at war with Jade March. Yeah. That's unfortunate. If you were a gobble, there'd be more, a lot more joke names. Oh, for sure. I mean, I'm. It's a little sad actually because the um, there used to be way more jokiness. Ooh. Discovered a mysterious layer of calcite rubble in one of her holds. It seems strange runic magic has been applied on it. Runes that our runesmiths have never seen before. The purpose of such runes is unclear, and the effect doesn't seem to matter anymore. Such a large and easy to dig through material could give us the opportunity to dig faster than ever before. It would surely have been great benefits to our holds construction progress if we choose to dig here. I mean, I don't have that much money, but we can fix that. Excellent. Dig, bitches. It's five dev. And tech wise, idea wise, I mean, we just, yeah, I think we're. Very capable of uh, developing you. So 30. 30 seems like a good number. I don't want to lose my trader. Stop. Expedition returns. Fantastic. Uh, let's have you back in our manpower pool. That's a chunk of money and dev. Or uh, mana points. I could do another expedition immediately. Uh, let's get that. I'm going to need to do some dev immediately again. Just fabricate a claim on your final province. And then we don't need you anymore. Natives of my tight passage have risen up. No. Back inside your passage. Green pit's done. Uh, at 40 the hold will start going deeper on random chance I believe, so 40 is a good number for holds. Good to know. Start paying off some of these loans as well. See you in a bit, Kevin. I hope it continues to go well as well. Rebels are sieging my tight passage. Nah, fam, they're um, they're just uh, they they try to invade, but you know it's just too tight. You just got to clench, and then you're you're in the clear. We 
rebels love the tight passage. That's true. That's true. It is a fact, actually. You attacked Thunderfist. Oh boy! Oh boy! Go on, one Zia. 82,000 men, 62,000 manpower versus 90,000 and 79,000. I am kind of thinking one Zia might have this. God, this would be perfect time for us to go. We've got a claim on Endon. I don't want Endon. My scientist is dead. Kind of want to sack you both off to find someone better. Inflation reduction? How are we doing for inflation? We're good on inflation. Um, let's get stab cost, man. Time to jump on the jade in the north? I think so, yeah. Also, that's helpful. The ancient golem. Servers on the battlefield with the shock damage. Yeah. Alright, um... I need to pay off my loans. So that I can get new loans. And then I'm going to build myself... 20 cannons. And a few more men. Check on their tech and ideas. So, tech 12 versus tech 15. Idea wise, full offensive versus full offensive. I mean, and we know that Wanzia's ideas are just crazy anyway. Morale of armies, 15%. Infantry combat ability, 15%. Um, strange enough, that's all there is there. Oh, manpower and true faith. Uh, versus commands. 5% discipline's not bad, actually. Maintenance modifier. But, just honestly, they, they may have just got more troops. I, I, I rate Zia here. Passage is complete. What was combat with again? Twenty nine. Anything else I can do? Yo, we could just fucking Deus Volt them. Extra morale of armies there as well. Yeah, I... Deus fucking Volt. Time to go. Loan offer? Sure. 
Cotton candy. We got the latest cotton shipment to craft into an adventure equipment and looked at the Made in Capacazole label. Um, many of us had the same thought. Capacazole is the place where the ingredients for our ale come. Then we looked at each other and nodded. We must throw the cotton in Stromolgiv. Soft-spoken hard drinkers. The other races often whine about dwarves being too tough to handle this, but might finally be it. It's no curious, there's nothing to cure, but the gentle softness of Bard's Naven managed to soothe the dwarven temper and turn the heads of many dwarves who have stormed out of an argument. So I get what? Improvelations and shit? Meh, boring. So I need 15 war score. My heir needs to be a general. Thank fuck you're 22. I mean, you can give my consort military command as well. Yo, he's not fucking bad. I think... Did this mission say that he needs to be in a battle? Personally in a battle or siege in the Serpent Spine. Okay, that's not a problem. What level did you get to? You're at 40. You're at 40. You're at fuck tons. I will accept loans from others, and then I'll pay off my estate loan with it. Colonize? I can't. Oh, I can now colonize. I mean, I've got claims on all of this. Wealthy Dwarven Majority District has recently seen an influx of orcs and goblins. No! They fucking haven't! Can we please... Stop having these silly cultural events. It makes no sense for us to get a gift. We should not be getting these culture events. How's Onesie doing? Yeah, I told you Onesie is beating the shit out of him. Goblin? Why? Wait, they're goblins? No. Fuck goblins. <sighs> Fucking cartels. You only need uh, 12 artillery for the bonus. So there's 13. Wait, I can't go here? Oh, right, because of this fort. Do I not have any... Oh, Thorar is a siege man. I still need my war score to be higher. 
before that mission can be done. Need to be at 15. I also need to occupy that. But then we're good. Does the tree get larger? Yes, it's one of the new style of mission trees where it expands the more you do stuff. Don't want to do an expedition right now. Could go defend my capital. The problem is they just run away all the time. So it's pointless. Are you going to actually stay there now? Come on, let me have a big battle with the command. Expedition mate, I'm going to turn you off for now because you annoy me. Big Battle versus the Command Thora versus um, Kaburo Lionborn. He's not their ruler, but it doesn't matter. Let's go and have this fight. Oh yeah, they, they suck. <laughs> Let's go all the way to the command capital thing up here. I wish I could steal maps. Oh, I can steal maps. This is the Jade Mines, right? Region Jade Mines. Let's go! What? Hello? That was fucking beautiful. I know all of your shit. Fantastic. And now we're at 15 war score. Axe to the fucking face. Let's go. The time has come for death, glory, or both. War with the command is inevitable. We're only ready, uh, and we are as ready now as we'll ever be. For our first order of business, the goblin squatters that occupy Tuad Dumakon will have to make way for us as we carve our way through the jade mines into the skull of the command. Axes fucking up. The event double blow happens. The, the, the fucking novel double blow happens, more like. I need to drink this one. There were a few sources of light in the great hall of Tuad Dumakron, but bright lights emanating from deeper inside the hold reflected on the steel of armor, blades, and muskets, and sometimes brightened up by a flash of gunpowder. As the fighting pushed back and forth over a scarred granite floor, the different armies could be identified less by sight than by sound. The shouts and sharp snapping orders of the command troops, the shrieking battle cries of the stolen gem goblins, and the guttural battle songs of the dwarves of Hul as Krakazol. Thing, ki, thing, King Thora I and Lord Adar sing right along as they grimly cut themselves a path forwards through the mass of metal and flesh ahead of them. Our hold and home be far or nearby, for honour and glory fight and die. With a cut and a slash, their bodies we rend, our enemies we smash, till we meet our end. They knew where they had to go. The hobgoblin officers had entrenched themselves on the great terrace, overseeing the hall, flagging commands to their troops below. Finally, they had cut themselves away towards the broad spiral staircase embedded in the wall. King Thora halted his song and barked a few quick orders. Ordgrim, Dolbar, have your warriors guard the entrance. The rest of you, with me! 
The staircase was already littered with corpses. Thing Thora made sure not to step on them as he rushed up the steps. Two figures came down the steps, and in one flash of an axe later, they joined their kin on the ground. Finally, they rushed through the gate of the Great Terrace, cutting into the ranks of the goblin and hobgoblin nobles and officers gathered there. King Thora sensed a flash of steel behind him, turning around to see Adar jump in front of a blow meant for him. As the body of his child collapsed... Fuck, I'm glad you sucked. <laughs> Thora swung his axe at the killer. A crowned goblin head fell to the ground. He stared at the corpse of Adar but for a moment, then collected himself and scoured the battle around him. A helmet with an ornate red plume was visible behind a row of hobgoblins. The head of the snake. Thora launched himself at the warriors, cleaving his way towards his quarry. Five axe blows later, he had reached him. And three more axe blows later, he had killed him. Thora tried to shout triumphantly, but found he did not have the breath to do it. A hobgoblin spear was lodged in his... Ch oh, for fuck's sake. Was lodged in his chest. Thora slumped to the ground, his hands gripping the shaft of the spear in his chest, pulling it out in one jerk. A flash of pain, then he felt nothing. The sounds of metal on metal filled the great balcony, but Thora could still be made... Uh, milk out the battle songs from the gate hall below. With his last breath, Thora rasped along to the words, Till we meet our end. The sadness! White piece with a command, but I gained the stuff. Interregnum 000 with a strong claim. Fuck. Wow, that's a blow. R I motherfucking P. There's only one real answer to all the recent upheaval, and that's what we amethyst dwarves are known to do. Get more ale! Uh, but in order to quench that thirst, we need to delve deeper into the Stramolgiv and make use of its ancient secrets. Alright. Interregnum needs to last two years, okay. The ruler is not Interregnum. Welp. So, I think that was great, alright? We had a war against the command that could, that, you know, didn't go to fucking colossal levels, right? We needed to just get to 15 war score before this whole thing happened. Remember when I was playing um, Amayan and we had the war against Larenkar? Interregnum, Interregnum's going to Immortal. Cool. Um, when we fought Larenkar, we had to get them to 90, 90 or 95 war score, which is fucking stupid. But going to 15, like, I, I think maybe I could have gotten, you know, 50 would have been, like, reasonable as well. Um, but 90, I think, is too much. I think maybe this 15 was maybe a little too low. Like, we could have, we could have had some more fights. One of our advisors has revolutionized the art of siegecraft and defensive fortifications. He's fought in all the wars of the Interregnum. Fought in all the wars of Interregnum. And attended frequent tours around the frontiers, redesigning and improving numerous fortifications. Um, so, Miltech cost? Sure. Yo. How long left? 216. We can get to 40 again. I, for one, think that Interregnum is the best ruler we ever had. I'd vote for them again. What's the status of Command versus 1 Zia? Uh, it looks like Command lost three provinces only. So, 1 Zia won. Didn't win huge, but they won.
That's a lot of fucking claims. Company of grudge bearers is you. I'll accept that. I didn't even get all of this land. That sucks. I wanted this. But yeah, I will take that at 40% off. Or not 40% off, 40% more expensive. Hey Brian, how goes the conquest and the drinking? It's going swimmingly. Just, yeah, swimmingly. We're, um, we just beat the command. Need to do it again, but you know, it's good. Uh, National Bank loan, I will repay that. Yeah, I just need to pay this one off and then we're good. Decent money. Drill troops in the capital, that's a good point. Thank you for the reminder. Ruined cops is self sustaining, very nice. Elven? A moon elf? Nah, fam. Why do we have moon elves? As we mourn our old King Thora and sing songs of his great deeds, we do realize we must recover from this loss. The command will not take long to lick their wounds, and without leadership, we will not be able to beat them back. And as the king died without an heir, a new one will have to be crowned soon. Let the king's council decide how to solve this issue. Finally, the council have decided upon a way to select a new monarch. Open to any dwarf brave enough to try, a great tournament is being held, with a crown of Hullus Krakazol as the grand prize. Contestants have to down a whole keg of ale before every match, um, which they only win when their opponent vomits, loses consciousness, or dies. The tournament rages for several days, with the number of candidates dwindling every match. After the final fight, a blacksmith named Gorik Irongut is finally crowned as the new king still partially covered in his last opponent's breakfast. He's a 445. You know, fucking take him. He's a 445, but he might end up being like a 446 or whatever, you know. As as the prophet was saying. So now I just need a statesman level 2 statesman. The king of Peridot Dwarves, the Exilarch, is still an existing institution and has dwelt in Rahan for ages now, but seemingly uninterested in retaking his rightful home, Grosomdir. Miss asked him if the time is, uh, has come or if it ever will. The exiled king. We just crowned a new one. Why are we looking at other kings? That's, that seems like a very dangerous path. We've sworn an oath to the Exilarch that we will reclaim Gorzumdir, we already did it, for the oath of an ominous Anifis Dwarf holds even in death. Return of the old king. Oh, for fuck's sake. We just got Iron Gut. Jesus. Sons of Zibiaches. Our diplomat arrives at the... I'm just going to lean back and need to uh, get comfy for this fucking novel. Our diplomat arrives at the lavish home of the Exilarch. Oh, actually, you know what I should do as well? If I'm leaning back, I'm further away from my monitor. So man needs... 
to get sexy. There we go. Our diplomat arrives at the lavish home of the Exilarch, the exiled king of Grosomdir. He's lived in peace and prosperity for ages, but has become lazy and indecisive over the years. An unsuitable disposition for such an important figure to our cause. After pleasantries are exchanged, he calls for lunch, where all de delicate matters can be discussed. These delicate matters, however, are not the state of his hold, but the actual delicacies that he's enjoyed for so long. As the day continues, our diplomat tries to explain the urgency of our reclamation, and how essential a secured Grosomdeer is. But his words fall on deaf ears. The next few days also bring no significant improvements to our relationship with the Exilage. But on the fifth day, he finally calls the diplomat into his private chambers, where he rests upon a large couch. I've thought about what you've said over the past days, he begins, and takes a sip of wine. How you've appealed to my honour and pride, to our shared past and our future. And I must say, I'm impressed with your idealism. But your people are young and your spirits are full of fire that will quickly consume us to us all if we do not quench it appropriately. He offers a glass of wine to our diplomat. I have waited, and I can still wait, until the time is right to make a move. He nods gravely. Our diplomat loses heart, having hoped that something might finally change, but alas, the Exilarch is still unwilling to devote himself to his inheritance. The next week, a missive from Hula's Krakazol arrives. If Exilarch unwilling, offer our own expedition. If he agrees, send word back. With these new instructions, the diplomat once again approaches the Peridot Dwarf. What is it this time? Your constant nagging begins to annoy me. Your Majesty, I understand that you wish uh, to make sure that the time is right for your reclamation and that it is safe for you to return. Yes, and? How about we, the dwarves of Hullas Krakazol, send in an advanced team of our own to gauge the dangers within before starting any reclamation efforts? The Exilarch silently stares at Diplomat for almost a minute before he reaches for some grapes. If you wish, then I seem no harm in it. You have my blessing, but do not disturb me further. You've spoiled my appetite. So, Grolsum dear will be reclaimed. It's already mine. The Return of the King. The green gate of Grosendir swings open, the gems sparkling in the afternoon sun of Rahen. In front stood many dwarves, humans, and even Harimari, witnessing the grand occasion, the reopening of the Peridot Hold. And there, in the middle of it all, perched upon a large barge, with pillows and drinks, lay the Exilarch himself, a self-secure grin on his lips. His bearers move forward and put him down in front of her chief engineer, who had been working tirelessly day and night to restore his hold. No, that doesn't feel right. In what way was this his hold? He'd done nothing for it. It was our people that brought it back from the brink. I must commend you on the great feat you've achieved here, the Exilarch ruminates. His suave, roy suave, 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 suave voice trickling through the air. I graciously accept your offering. No. Silence. All chatter in the onlookers falls quiet. From behind the engineer came an unexpected voice, grave and full of authority. You have done nothing for this hold, while we have worked ourselves to the knees to restoring it. You have no right to it, no more than we have. From the shadow behind the gate walks Gorik. He's been around for like a week. Just gonna point out, he's been here for a week. Um, by any right except that of birth, this is our hold. We have laboured while you drank and ate without a care in the world. We and Grosomdeer have no need for a lazy, complacent, and indifferent dwarf. Away with you. Return to your estate and indulge in those petty pleasures. May your people, who have braved Rahan for as many years as you have, who have laboured to find a life as we have, enter. But neither we nor they need a king indifferent to their struggles. We have no need for, for a lazy lark. Culturing become Peridot Dwarf. But it's already Amethyst. Eh, well, it's fine. That was a fucking novel. Yo, get my ships cheaper, let's go. Alright. What's next? Level 3. Diplo Advisor. Uh, we can do that. Every nation that owns a province in Rahan that borders a tree of stone either has 75 opinion, is monstrous, or is a rival. Uh, 
your arrival, so that's fine. Uh, it's you, really, that I need to make a rival. You've rivaled me. Wait, no, that is. It's done. Unless... It's Bloodsong that's fucking it up. It is Bloodsong that's fucking it up. Oh, wait, no, you should be... Aren't you monstrous? No, you're not. Hmm. I'm not going to be able to get Bloodsong to 75 opinion. It's just not not going to happen. I can't make them a rival. That's not going to happen. What I need is for the command to integrate them. Another Adar? Nah, nah, fam. Wait. Yeah, okay, good. That's shit. Ha, <sighs> hmm, that's fucked. That's unhelpful. Oh, we don't actually have any, uh... Don't have any siege. And how many cannons do you need? Just seven. Sack of Ovdal Kanzad. Balls. That was not my intention. Wait, you're still 134 still? Wow, okay. Fuck me. Man is expensive. He just straight up Giga devved. Missions are really cool. Yeah, they are. All that they desire and all your non existent subjects. I was going to make cans out of subject. The Valkamol has ever been honoured tradition of the Hulas Krakazol, with spirits being exchanged over any diplomatic meeting. But although our hold is reborn, we are not what we once were. We are never quite a hold of diplomats, but even less so than uh, even less so now than before. We are ruled by a king who will drink with his people. Let us hold her Haraz Valkamol, where every dwarf of Hulas Krakazol will exchange spirits and drink with one another. Is that here? No. Which hold are we talking? Haraz Volkamol. Oh, 
I don't know where that is. But okay. The old tradition of Volcomol was not a bad one, but these days we have a need for grander gestures. Now every advisor, noble, crafter, and farmer is gathered. All amethyst dwarves wait outside the great halls, each with a flagon in their hands provided by the state. The Harris Volcomol begins today. From this point on, the king and all those who have come after him will drink with their people. A dwarf that cannot hold their drink is no amethyst, and a dwarf that does not drink with their fellows cannot lead us. Agreed. Enact Orzanog. I'm from battles. Autonomy change cooldown. Monarch military skill. That's not bad. I prefer that. Where's the hag has rivaled us? At least he will restore his hold. Yeah. I I want to make him a vassal so that he'll restore the hold, basically. Uh, that's fine. Hold restoration in Tuad de Macron. That's expensive, but I will do it anyway. The cartels will pay for it. And I will pay off the rest of the debt. Or as much of it as I can. Um, <laughs> it's the name of a tradition or hold. Yeah, I think so too. Our great excavation of Calcite and Grosendeer is giving us large, uh, huge benefits when it comes to the development of the hold, allowing us to progress in our work faster than anywhere else. Let's go! Dig all of the digging. Digging is good. I see absolutely nothing that can go wrong with this. Also, there's Nook's Cranny that I didn't even fucking uh, get yet. Guamood can have some knowledge sharing. It's long past time to organize the Harris Volcomol, gather the dwarves, ready our ales, and let's drink with our people. All right, let's go. Time has come. A large number of amethyst dwarves have gathered for the Harrow's Volcomol, waiting eagerly for the Keg Lord to choose the ale to be served. Although it costs to produce these pure ales is high, each one of these has been masterfully brewed in Stramolgiv itself, and such purity gives the ales the lasting effects they are famed for. As Keg Lord, Gorik must hold his own in the seven rounds, lest he be found unworthy to lead the amethysts to glory. The more drinks, the more glory. Of course, drinking so much drinks so pure could well kill the Keg Lord. But that would be no less glorious, and a right and proper way for an amethyst to go. Um, ideas and innovativeness. Yeah, let's go Dwarvar Dark. First batch of drinks have been served. Dwarves guzzle ale like they paid for it, during one another to keep going. The halls are filled with laughter, song, and the odd brawl here and there, and it's altogether to quite the merry and lively occasion. The Keg Lord sits on his throne with his flagon of the purest ale. It's his duty, nay, his honour, to drink with his people. And drink he shall. Keg, 
Excuse me. Keglod feels the eyes of the Great Hall aimed at him, speculating whether or not he will live through it. Chug. Chug? The next batch of drinks has been served. Dwarves goes to ale like they're being paid for it. Yeah, okay. How many rounds is there? Seven? Are these stacking? No. Forsh. Forsh round. Uh, I, I feel like maybe we stop. Yeah, the text doesn't change, it just becomes um, less well spelled. Am I planning to get wrecked by the greed curse later in the game? You love playing Dwarves and Amber, but the gold, uh, gold curse is honestly terrible and pretty annoying. Yeah, the Horde curse is a whole fucking deal. I don't blame you for not liking that part. Hey, you've been fucking annexed. That's perfect. So now, my diplomatic advisor needs to just be level 3. So I need 111 gold. Fucking orc war band coming. Right, what am I missing? One of the following. Diplomat has a leader advisor has a skill of at least 3. He does. He literally does. Oh, he needs to be a diplomat. Fuck's sake. Well, there we go. Now it's done. Our trial run in Kepakazol has produced plentiful results, and we shall now commence the operation once again on a much larger scale. This time, all in the mountainside plateaus. Rent the land, farm the land, harvest the land, get the land. Hell yeah. Eric Zen needs 15 dev. Eric's end gone. It's one of these. There it is. So what uh, What dev did it need? 15 dev. And a farm estate and all that. It's got a farm estate. It's almost there anyway. Farm estate, courthouse, expand infrastructure. This game, game option for those stupid costs that'd be fine. People can want the challenge, can leave it on. The people that want to enjoy the fantasy worlds, uh, but Empire Bill can do that too. That's... Yeah, I, I, I see where you come from. Are we still... Oh, we're at 30 combat width now. O ye mighty Stramolgiv, who liest in this moment, give us our daily ale. Oh my god. Okay, we're, we're doing that. O ye mighty Stramalkiv, who liest in this mount, give us our daily ale and forgive us for our lack of your maintenance as we were drunk. 
We promise to give you the work and care that you deserve, just after one more pint of yours. We'll give you as glorious, no, even more glorious than you ever were. In nomine patris, amen, and all that. Uh, full power for 15 years, goods produce modifier, and three dwarven knowledge. Didn't even know we were doing that anymore. Oh yeah, speaking of, oh, we can rebuild railways! Oh, son of a bitch. Wait. How often could we do this? Hey, we're going we're going into Dirt Hole Rock first. It's a long one, but not too dangerous. So, manpower wise, we actually need to get to Dirt Hole Rock. They can just have ten, because because why not? <clears throat> but we need to give them like hundred uh, percent supplies. Organization, map the terrain, manpower, raise the morale. Morale's pretty good already, actually. Uh, and you know what? They can have more of a share. They have 300 extra share. Horde Curse was Ambanar's first answer to the late game snowballing. It was revolutionary at the time, but quite scuffed nowadays compared to some other late game disasters now in the mod. I mean, it's not the worst one I've seen. The worst one I've seen is, um, oh, what, what's the, what are they called? They're from here. Rabagekur. When Rabagekur get a hundred provinces, um, they explode. A so we finished this. We could now go Gore Zumbrog, but I'm going here first, because otherwise you're going to get it, and I don't want that. And Gore Zumbrog can be done by this. Actually, there's no natives there at all. Oh, did I just uh, fucking abandon it? Wait, I've only got one colonist now. That's unfortunate. The Green Gate of Grozomdir remains open for all who wish to enter, except the Exilarch, who had been cast out of these halls ages ago and again recently. Yet his people, the Peridots, remain scattered throughout Rahan. Dwarves who have not sat idly by, reveling in their riches, but working hard and well. Dwarves who have earned a place along the Dwarves of Grozomdir. We shall welcome them in with open arms. They explode. Basic, basic, yeah, yeah. They, they kind of explode. I'm going to do all three of these at the same time. Fuck the money. Flock of cloakers. Yeah, fuck. I, I completely cocked that up. Over the last few sunless days, deep in the dwarf, our strange gleaming eye has followed us. It's a Nothic! A seasoned bestiaris has identified the strange creature to be a Nothic. I actually didn't read that it was a Nothic. It was going to be two things, a Nothic or a Beholder. And we I remembered that we had a Nothic event some time ago. So it was kind of on my mind still. Um... I mean, it wasn't that. It was. It was like... We killed it at, like, level three. But we, we beat the shit out of it, so it's good. And, yeah, we're going to recall you, and you're going to be done here. So, that's costing us, what, 12 gold? 16 gold, okay. Strange sounds echo through the caverns, sounds of breaking stone and minerals hitting against each other, like a mill crushing them to pieces. 
As the first scouts rounded the corner, they could see that the first guess was not far off the truth, as expected. There, sitting among the small deposits of metals, sat a Zorn, a hideous scaled creature not of this world, shoveling rocks inside its wide maw, with three arms surrounding it. The scouts return with their observations, so that the expedition leader can decide how to approach this outsider, seize its meal, or make the use of their nature to shift through stone as easily as fish swim through water. Uh, use its ability. Help us out. Thanks to a seasoned adventurer capable of speaking the Zorn's strange language, we persuaded the creature to help us out by scouting the area in exchange for a portion of the minerals we found. Nice. That's dope. Societal collapse has to have reasons, not just magic curse that very suddenly and very quickly screws you. I mean, it's not really suddenly, considering what actually occurs with it. Like, you do have to have 10,000 gold or an income of, I think, a 1,000. Or income of something, right? Like, what we probably should do is have 10,000 gold in the bank to manually trigger it. Zorn are cool. The 4E Zorn were way cool than the 5E Zorn. I've never actually seen a Zorn, so I'm going to have a look for what they look like. Okay, they've got an extra foot for a penis. That works. That's certainly, a, that's a look. Okay. Let's see if I can uh, show you guys what this, what this thing looks like. That's a Zorn. Gain conquest against Rajnahaga. I don't know why I have claims on this. But <laughs> Gulen's gonna fucking destroy them, so. Income above 150. Right. Shit. It's pretty close, actually. <laughs> I think maybe I'm going to save up money, get over 10 grand. It's a monster with a mouth on top of their head because they can swim in a rock. Actually, did that show up on stream or not? It should have done. Yeah, it should have done. I got the claim through an event. Lost malfunctioning golem. Nice. Fix that. I mean, if you're getting annoyed at a horde curse, I dread to think what your opinions of um oh, what's it called? Um Oh, what's it called? What's it called? The, the plague one. Fuck, what's it called? Like, Obsidian Invasion can, can get... Like, that can get fucked as well. But... Oh, what's it called? Serpent's Rot. That one's way worse.
Assembly of Holds. Enables Parliament. Parliament's shit. I hate the Parliament. I mean, my absolutism is probably maxed out at fucking zero. I feel like there's mad delay, because all of you are probably thinking, Ah, I'm the one that told him that it was Serpent's Rot he was thinking of. Uh, and I'm like, I, 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 I took a very long time to figure it out, but I still said it was Serpent's Rot before anyone said it was Serpent's Rot in chat. General Estates isn't bad either. I think, I think we're going to go Aristocratic Court. I hate Assembly of Hold. I hate Parliament. I hate it so much. Can I can I not just like spam this fucking mission to rebuild? Or is it like being rebuilt one province at a time in a row? It's not even in a row though. Found all the human curses and disasters were so totally overcomable and fun. I'm not sure you dealt with Serpent's Rot before. Serpent's Rot is the worst one. Did I get this from Good Hard Labor? No. But I'm going to have to take those. Have a three star general. I need to sponsor beast slayers and sponsor monster hunters. Or have heroes in the army. Fine. That's fine. To drink and to die, that's our goal. But not just any death will do. Our ancestors, the amethysts of yore, have died glorious deaths while we are plagued by flailing age. This will not do. It's time to find glory in battle, to listen to the Slayer's call, and to uh, and the call to seek out ever stronger enemies that will fall to our weapons. In the centuries of decay following the last days of the Dwarvar, the fall of our once great empire under the mountains of Halan, other creatures have inherited the tunnels and caverns. But these inheritors are not good caretakers. In fact, they mock our art, our culture, our very history. Since our return to the mountains, we've wrestled control over the caves from them back to us with considerable success. So successful indeed that the orcs, goblins, kobolds, and all the other dark dwarves pose no challenge to us anymore. There is no glory in killing for us anymore, at least not killing goblins and their ilk. But we crave a challenge, the dream of conquering mighty beasts, besting even the most foul and devilish creatures in the depths of hell has to offer. The thrill, the glory, the personal satisfaction of plunging a blade to the hilt in an enemy far beyond us, to bring down a hammer on cracking skulls alike. That is what we are. It's who we are. So after years under the ground, mostly content with our hold, we look outwards again, not for fertile lands and old allies, but to find a new challenge worthy of our attention. The vast lands of Rahen have much to offer in that regard. Beneath the thin veil of civilization that the Rahas uphold, there's also a land of beasts and monsters who are practically waiting for us, waiting to be slain. Uh, sure. Grosum deer, it needs a workshop and a doodad and a what's its. Apparently, advancement effort. Our coffers could stand to be a little heavier, and we produce plenty of weaker brews that could be selling to the humans and Haramari of Rahan. To this end, there are many voices in the government advocating for the opening of a grand inn for outsiders in Grosendir. In order to accomplish this, however, we'll need a lot of planning, a lot of labour, and a lot of glass. Uh, sure. Rebuild. 
Rulo has an ale modifier of at least level 5. Where do I see my ale modifier? That's kind of wild. Um, but it will uh, we'll have to figure out our ale modifier in the next uh, next time I do a stream because for right now I'm going to end it here. Um, I will be streaming again tomorrow at the same time. Uh, so if you're not subscribed, feel free to kick the subscribe button and the bell button and then because uh, I will be playing some more of this campaign um, tomorrow. And it should be a good time. But for now, thank you all very much for watching. It's been a pleasure. Um, I guess all that really should be said at this point is uh, cheers. Bye-bye.